Enjoy this message courtesy of Overcomers Assembly Studio. In life, you've got to make a choice, right or wrong. We pray that you are blessed as you make the right choices in life. The entire being of us, that is, our spirit, our soul, and our body, we want them to cooperate, thank you, to appreciate you, to show that we recognize you for whom you are, our Lord and our Savior. We say, blessed be your name as you minister grace again to us, and as you are served, our thanks be when this day in Jesus' name. Thank you, bless everything. Hallelujah be your name forever. For we are prayed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. I know it could be strange that we're talking about thanking God in April. Show that we understand who God is. You know, in advance for what is determined to do for you. You by faith you can recognize it. And yet not it seems unfit. Because all these things that God has given us they are in trouble. When we talk about mercy, talk about grace, we talk about his law. He also expressed us to rest the case. And the Bible falls behind it to show that you are deeply understanding me, knowing me, and trusting me, believing in me, then even ahead of time, giving you thank this great God for whom it is, what he has done for you in the past. And what he's still doing, and what he's still going to do. So, when we say giving, no giving is taken from give, right? Give ordinarily, we talk about transferring something to someone. Then you can also look at it as handing your love. But you, because giving the life that you, it's like you are providing that person, that thing that you are released. That is, in this, most of the cases, will be out of law, emotional support, care. So now, when we now go to the word, thanks. We are expressing gratitude. We are expressing what? Gratitude. And acknowledging something that we have received or something that we are going to receive. Now, let's look at the way it all started. The meaning. Given times. That's the way. That is a sort of confession, right? Confession that says you are appreciating love, you are appreciating kindness, you are praising for what you are emotionally experiencing and what you feel you have gathered, what you feel you have you are been blessed with. Let's look at the account of the you know, David is a man that is worthy to be emulated. Remember the second Samuel that was read to us by our sister here, right? But I mean, just as well. we only took a little part of it. But look at it. where David was coming from. Saul was the original king, right? And 
when you have a king, you have a lineage attached to that personality. And incidentally, Jonathan was one of the children of Saul. Very good looking to, you know, I mean, good manners, everything was good with Jonathan. Am I asking? Because Jonathan, even as the heir apparent, the man the prince, so the first king that was established in those days, you know, no one will have that opportunity and will want to throw it away. When you go in, I mean, it's not democracy. Some people still want to entrench linear, you know, uh, control. That is, they want to be the, the president and they want their children in that succession to become president. That is the way in democracy, where we want everybody to participate and we want the best, the best. But in kinship, is an established order. When somebody becomes the king, he, I mean, the son automatically, he's automatically becomes the next king, you know, and the king, and then, of course, the, you know, because there's a royal family kind of thing, then it doesn't have to be the direct son, you know, just like we have in, uh, in Britain. But this time around, let's focus on what we're talking about. Jonathan was there, but here comes somebody from nowhere, David. Oh, because we are powerful, or because we have the grace to have demolished, you know, Goliath. And in fact, anybody, online, if it were now, if you have a gun and you were able to destroy someone, an invader, someone would say, oh, they are good. Maxman, right? But that does not mean that you are the only good Maxman. There are also so many of them. But here we had David who picked the ordinary five stones with his king and demolished the great Goliath. Cause everybody praised him. But that does not still qualify to be the king, right? And lo and behold, people start facing him. And then the king also recognized that he had some gifts in him. Everything was coming up like that. Jonathan and David they became friends. Not because he wanted David to, to usurp his position, but just because he was a good natured person. If it, I mean, uh, when Saul was still on the throne, God decided because of the mistake he made, decided to do what? To dethrone him and bring somebody whom he knew at that time and whom he knew even in that for things to come, decided to change Saul to make the lady king. And by nature, you recollect, you have a throne, somebody wants to take your throne. You want to fight, right? You want to destroy the person. So someone's determined by any means that David must not leave with everything possible that David survived. Because of that, I'm totally cut the story very short. David survived. But they have to be running away from Saul. And again, running away from his best friend. Because it was Jonathan who actually saved him. Because if not for Jonathan, probably, I mean, physically, because it was not really Jonathan. You know, if it were not for Jonathan, probably nobody would have warned David to run away. So David ran away and he escaped the onslaught. 
and lo and behold, David did everything you know there and there until Saul was taken off the stage. Not just off the stage, he perished completely with all the family members. Oh, God, that's such a man. That was simple. I mean, that everybody thought it was a nobody. I mean, of course, you know, he, he, just, he got grace to be recognized. What am I saying? This David, even with everything that he went through to get to that exalted position, he still remained man like you and I. He still fought He was still making mistakes. He was still doing what we do these days. Even when we are not caught. We know sometimes our mind is not the best in terms of, you know, our attitude. What you think about your colleague, your friends, or whatever. Sometimes you love the position they are, you love what they have, and you feel like they should be yours, or you know, like the position should change. But you've forgotten that some of these things that we that we see from outside, it's not all roses, it's not all, I mean, even if it's better of roses, we all know that roses are thorns. So the people that we envy sometimes, they are going through some very difficult, very challenging, very, you know, situations that are not public, that are not beautiful. And that is why we should recognize whatever we are going through and always appreciate God for giving us the real power to be able to ride out. This David that I'm talking about was on throne, coming on the throne. And, you know, I don't know whether I passed this or whatever, he decided to, you know, to relax, probably at his penthouse, and looking beyond where he should be looking at, he saw. The beautiful girl, she I mean, of course, not a single lady, not a single woman, a married woman to one of his powerful soldiers, right? And no, I mean, look, when you see what you are not about to you should take your eyes from it, right? Immediately, and then the pain of it. Like, Sorry, God, for looking that way. You, know, you don't look at it again. <laughs> that is not how it should be. And you look, and you must have looked properly. So, yes, I desire this woman. You are the king, you can do, you know, you have power. You have power, you have some authority. He converted and brought a woman to his spouse. Because he loved him. And when you love somebody, and you know it's not supposed to be yours, you can repent, right? But then he did not repent immediately. Instead, he planned to kill his great soldier. And not just you know, small plan, plan such that the person is definitely destroyed. Leave him to the center of the wall and then retract so that he wouldn't have a chance. And I mean, all the plans. And God knew that, you know, that was the fact. So what, what other, I mean, I'm saying this because what other wrong thing with anybody? I don't. You know, unfortunately, the, the 
for Sudha died, and Vashaba also conceived. But God made sure that you know he, he corrected. But you know, ordinarily, some people when when they err or when they make mistake, they feel constrained or shy or even pompous to admit that that was a mistake and then ask for forgiveness. But that was not the thing. Every time you make mistakes, ask for genuine forgiveness. And if the Bible records it, that when he makes mistakes and asks for forgiveness, he does not go back to make the same mistakes. Praise the Lord. No one has said, that King David went in and sat before the Lord. That is, he has always been praying to this God. He's, he, you know, I mean, in communion with his God. He said, Who am I, O Lord? And what is my house? I'm telling you, I'm just this to reflect on my own personality as well, my own home, my own self. Because we all have stories, right? We all have something to think about our past. He said that you have brought me this far, and yet this was a small bit in your side. Oh Lord God, and you have also spoken of the servant's hour for a great while to come. How small is this? God is not just looking at the past. He's not looking at the person. He's simply giving you. That's why right. here we entrench it. We tell ourselves. We want to repeat it so that we can always remember that we are covenant children. Covenant. We are different. Don't look at your sides. Don't look at anything. You know, once you are covenanted with God, you are special. He said, Is this the manner of man, O oh Lord God? Now, what more can they listen to you? For you, Lord God, know yourself. For your word's sake and according to your own heart, you have done all these things, not other things, all these great things. To make your servant do that, therefore you are great, O oh Lord. For there is no man, nor is any, is there any God besides you, according to all that we have heard with our ears? And who is like your people, like this church, the one nation? Thank God, we are part of the committee of the nation of Israel. So everything that we stand for is to glorify God. And if you go further, you see how he destroys any piece of his children in charge. You no, know, you talk about the church. You know, uh, it was the last thing, but really important. So you are the church of God. You are his nation. You are his glory. You are, you are the one to show forth his majesty, his glory, his power, even here on that right now. And so that is why I'm so, you know, I'm so intrigued with David when in Psalm 136. One to twenty six. Just say, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. You know, people will say, For oh, his mercy and forever. Oh, give thanks to the God of God, for his mercy and forever. I don't know how many times you want to hear that. For his mercy, the mercy of God and forever. Mercy. What do we need? Can you imagine if it is judgment that we're talking about? 
How many times have you fallen and risen up? How many times have you made mistakes? If it were the issue of love, even as the greatest man in the US right now, you will have to sit in front of the church or the jury to answer the mistakes that you made. Then you can remind your God who says for your past mistakes is mercy and yours forever. And even your future mistakes is mercy and yours forever. So he who laid out the heart of all the waters is Jesus. The moon and stars to rule the night. The one who defeated Egypt was mercy and yours forever. Amen. He, you know, this great God, we cannot compare. I want you to take your time and go to that Psalm 136. Just see what you have done before. And know what's something. I know what's the state of you. And then key yourself into those promises. Because those promises are here and immeasurable for you. So, because of time, we want to see the relevance of living times. Even right now, that we know the people of the old, that is, are four, 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 four fathers. They were in the habit of testimony. Remember, after David, Solomon was. Not from the first wife, according to the open heaven that we had today, he was born of a woman that was not supposed to be the wife of David, who was, I, I know, brought in uh, out of sin. When Solomon came, and you know, when you're talking about lineage. You know, lineage, there's a way, you know, the lineage is right. You know, the first woman, or the second woman before it comes to the third or whatever, you know, but this time around, Pasha Babu was not even supposed to be a wife. The son that, the first one that lived was Solomon, and he was made the king. After his marriage. But you know what happened to Solomon? Solomon learned from his father, David. He knew the importance of thanksgiving. He knew the importance of celebrating God. Like, I mean, because like, see my sister, after praying and praying and praying and praying, and the answer is not yet coming. You know, I know the answer is coming, but it's hanging somewhere. You know, you know when you pray and you have not received, you know that you know, there are some, some of these angels, they sort of delay, sort of, you know, distract and make you not to have the confidence of, your, of answers to your prayers. It's not a God You know what? I just find a way praising God, thanking Him even in advance, thanking Him. Some of the things I do that I used to challenge God, it's not this, I mean, it's my secret, but I can share the secret. You know, some of the times, you know, when you are committed to paying tithes. You know, even for salaries I do not have, I do have any, but I've not received it. I do have to pay the time for it. That is in anticipation because I do have to get it. But it's not, you know, somebody who's going to receive something, you know, it's not convenient. That means you, you know, you are taking from 
your reserves. You know, I you know reserves are not are made for for time that are difficult, right? But because you know this God, and you know, God is taking me through this, you know, otherwise should I can take I, I release myself. And then that is where you have the peace. You are showing God that you can trust Him. Just like Abraham trusted Him to the level that He told Isaac that God would provide the ram that He was going to slaughter. But if you knew God was going to provide the ram, why did you type him? And then you were trying to, to kill him, to, you know, to slay him, to sacrifice him. And it was an absolute trust. God, you gave me the son. If that is how you want to make it to happen, I just trust you unconditionally too. I said, okay, now I know. And I'm so certain I will trust in absolutely. Never happened. This God. So why was it then the rap? You know, was the ticket the one that was now used. He was not looking for the other guys. The other guys was just was provided by God himself. You know, just go and take it. And of course, God tied me sure that tied the next. You know, the lamp could not run away. You know, very easily took it and then slaughtered. There's nothing that you are praying for that God has done. It's not answering or as not answer. If it is still being delayed, just thank you. Thank you. Recognize that all blessings, all blessings that are naked, rich, and that does, and that do not add sorrow to them. Because I'm using the view right now. It's all blessings, all. They come from God Himself. No, does not mean that. You can't get blessings from many of them. You can get blessings from many of them. But know that such blessings, there are sorrows attached to them. Like, because, I mean, I've not seen the one to one with some of them, but I've asked stories. Some people, they will tell them, yes, you know, just sleep, you know, probably bring them. Social sacrifice, you know, they are, I mean, I'm open the cupboard, I'm open some millions to come out. There are people who are, you know, it is real. It is real. Some people enrich themselves through diabolic means, satanic means. But when it happens, or when people go to, to such sources, to ask our children, when it happens, you will sign an account, you will sign a register, you will sign an agreement. If I give you a million dollars today, you are going to leave your, your life is sh short. Instead of living 50 years, you are going to live 20 years. Which one do you prefer? You want the money or you want your life? So you want the money, you sign the agreement then. <laughs> You know, then you take it. It's your, it is out of your volition. You agree to it. So when it happens, don't blame anybody. The devil does not have a control over your lives. But when you agree with him, then you don't have to blame him because he offered you. And you can reject any offer, right? <laughs> but if you have not rejected, why right? do you have to blame him? You blame yourself first. Amen. So thank you know when talking about gratitude. And gratitude, not because 
you are the one who, are the, is, who is determining it. He first gave it to us. After all, he created us. After all, look at yourself, beautifully created. Then we missed it by our progenitors. He even sent the only one who could redeem us. That's Jesus Christ. Send Jesus Christ to redeem us. And Jesus Christ came. And they had to go through torture, through all those things, all the people of us. Because without that, there is no protection. He was able to redeem us. But in all this, do that when we took him as our Lord and Savior, we have imbibed his message. And through that mercy, grace has been parted. And now we are a subject of love. With love, love for him, love for our neighbors, and most love for ourselves, there's nothing that we can do. So with that attitude and knowledge base, we need to understand it at all the time. The pill that we should be taking is not any of the drugs, is not anything that will, you know, intoxicate us or that will make us behave any kind. Just to relax and just thank him, bless him, appreciate him. Because with this, power will come. Honor will come. Glory will come. And in his presence, we'll be able to do more than ordinary. Because God inhabits the praises of his people. Know that there's no time you will be alone when you are praising him. When you are thanking him. Now we are established. We do not want to wait till November when there is starts living holiday. We know that every day is supposed to be the days of grace and by the time those who are still not the kind of knowledge that you have, you know, by the time you wait, you have overcome, you have come so far. God would have blessed you beyond your widest imagination. So, why on I mean, that period when you now join the to say yes, because I'm, I mean, I won't be left to go. I'm still going to bless God. I'm still going to thank Him because He has done great and marvelous things in the years past, in the months past, and even now. And that this great God is going to do more and more and more, even in the months and the years to come in Jesus' mighty name. So I want to appreciate the God in our lives, and I want to appreciate the way Jesus Christ has given it to us very clearly that even with all the powers that is embedded in him as the son of God, he did not take it for granted. When he was feeding the 5,000, I'm just going to give you like two examples of our time. John 6, verse 11 said, Jesus then took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, if you want to feed 5,000 people, and you have just five loaves of bread, I mean, whatever I decide to feed the loaves of bread, you know, a small piece. I'm sure I cannot carry a little more bread that is as big as these are our children. Even while a powerful you know, young men, when they are carrying just a box of bread to feed how many of us, you know, they have to carry 
you know, with the care and everything. And can you imagine? You need 5,000. But what did Jesus say? What did that miracle that transformed five loaves of bread to feed five thousand people and see them basket? You know, I, 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 you know what's like you know, my wife was saying, when you hear the name Thomas, how do you want to believe it? So, you know, the transformation you have five loops. How was it multiplied? I mean, I, I you know, I, I still try to imagine, you know, you have five loops of bread, the, 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 you know, it's tangible. But then you took the five loops. You probably gave it to five people, right? Those five people, you ask them, just go and be cutting the loaves. And in fact, when you start cutting the loaves, because it will still look like the same size, right? Then the loaves, I don't know this, how the size will be. Then you know that loaves, when it gets to an individual, how it becomes big enough to be able to satisfy that person as a meal. And then for whatever number it was called to probably 20 or 40 or whatever, then you start distributing like when you do the communion. And because sometimes when we are distributing the communion, I just want to imagine what they give me to what I had to do. You know, when I was started, when I started like this, you know, when they give us the, I mean, the communion to share. So I imagine if God wants to show. You know, and then, but, you know, God is not a magician. When it is necessary, he performs his miracles. So he said, so, I mean, Jesus said to the Lord, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated. So also the fish, as much as they wanted. As, I'm, I'm reading the Bible, as much as they wanted. Probably one of these days that we're going to downtown because we, it's the sad me seeing the people multiplying under the bridges. Probably one day, one day, when God wants to show his glory. I don't know, God has different ways of showing it. Because I remember when I go with my brother here in Santa, you know, the time sometimes it will be the last, the last meal, we go to the last person. And again, when we don't even have much, God will command some people to bring up, to bring food from other sources. So while we are sharing on this side, so when I will be sharing on the other side. You know, God has his own different ways. Just like the raven, you know, raven flying to feed a lighter. The raven, I mean, I don't know if the raven was, you know, was so satisfied. He was not hungry at all. He had, he, he had been overfed. But the level that says, we go and release what we satisfy a human being. Amen. Then let's look at the case of the race of Lazarus, John 11 41. Lazarus was dead, stinking. It wasn't as if and, you know, he fainted and then somebody tapped him and then he woke up or, you know, I mean, I don't know what we do in a shop, right? It's do shop and they had to start beating again. No, it has passed that stage. It was rough, it was smelling. People said, yes, you know, how do you, you see people in there? I mean, when they demonstrated this in four, four days, and uh, you know, the chemicals were not like in these, I mean, in these days. But what did they say? So they took away the stone. So that means nobody had been there before to be in shock. And Jesus can not even go there to give him mouth to mouth. Rest of, uh, what do you call it? Restoration. He didn't go there to do that. He didn't lie down on him like Elijah did for the 
the, the, the son of the widow. No, if you say so that everybody will see that this is God, that there's no doubt about it, and called outside the cave. As I was very sure I talked to some of us who are still believing that Jesus is like an apostle. Not exactly, you know, just, I mean, that is not for us to actually. So they took away the stone and lifted up his eye and said, Father, he recommended Father, I thank you. You have had. As I was, even with the garments where it was laid, came out. So it wasn't anything, it wasn't magic. And then they removed the ropes, removed the clothes, and then the celebration started. But how did that the kind of celebration? We will definitely be weak to acknowledge the awesomeness of this, the tears of children. And so I'll tell you whatever you are going through, but God is here. Let us stand up and just wave our hands. Let us stand, wave our hands to this good God. Just say, God, I thank you. God, I bless you. God, I magnify your name. Father, I give you adoration. I thank you for my past. I thank you for my present. I thank you for my future. I thank you that you are able to confirm that the generations to come after me, they are also covenanted, and that the goodness will be upon them, and that from God to God shall be to you. Take glory to the take honor, take adoration. Bless you. Blessed be I thank you for this achievement. I thank you for the love. I thank you for the grace of God. I thank you, Lord, for what you have done. Thank you, Jesus. Please like and share our videos. And also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you.